Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video I present the Skyrora XL Rocket by Skyrora Limited, which is a private space company founded about three years ago uh, in Edinburgh, but it has substantial staff in Ukraine as well as offices elsewhere. Uh, but it is a small rocket meant for my small rockets pack and it'll be part of the small rockets pack So when I link it in the video description, it'll come with the other small rocket things like uh, launcher uh, rocket one and The little model rockets actually Skyrora limited started off with model rockets. Uh, they that's basically all they've launched <laughs> uh, They well, I mean when I say model rockets it's the big model rockets, you know the size M and above so anyway, but yeah, it'll have the other parts in there, including the CubeSats. But these are the parts related to Skyrora here, and you can get them by just typing in Skyrora. This is a payload matching the maximum payload that they specified, 315 kilograms, and I'm just going to test how it works given the numbers that I've put in. I've adjusted them a few times already. This is the third stage. It's a little bit heavier than what they in indicated. Uh, it's a little bit hard because what they said wasn't entirely clear as far as the mass of this. It has a lot more volume than it seems to be using as far as a tank size. Uh, it's sized right. Um, they they actually have foil over it, but I didn't put the foil yet. Uh, and they didn't indicate where the RCS is. Uh, there, there was some curious uh, wordage on this one. For instance, uh, instead of saying loaded mass, they said loading mass. And the loading mass on this was uh, 590 kilograms. We've got a 608 kilograms altogether as loaded mass, but you can see there's more available volume here. It's kerosene HTP. Everything is kerosene HTP. The thrust of this is 3.5 kilonewtons, and the ISP in vacuum is 305 seconds. The additional curious wording is for the attitude control, it says electro actuator TVC, thrust vector control. That's fine. So they're saying that this gimbals. Um, in a wide range of inclination of orbits. TVC in a wide range of inclination of orbits does not make a whole lot of sense to me, but we'll leave that be. And uh, that is the third stage. It is a pressure fed stage. This is an adapter for it to connect it to the second stage. And so that will release it. The second stage is uh, this one. And it'll also carry the fairings. And the second stage, I, I didn't see much detail on it, though uh, there are things that having finished modeling, oh, we want the va vacuum one. Having finished modeling, I saw some additional images that I wish I had seen before, but uh, I was basing it off on the specific page on the Skyrora XL and also on the third stage, so, and also the payload user's guide. So we've got the fairings that go on like that. And we've got the inner stage adapter. Oh, on this engine, we have to be careful to pull it out and make sure it's on the right node. Otherwise, it'll try to go on the node that the inner stage adapter is supposed to be connected to. So like that and like that. And then the first stage tank. It's pretty heavy rocket. I mean, it's much, much, because it's using HTP and kerosene throughout, it's much heavier than uh, the electron rocket, for instance. They are this small. They are very small engines, which might be good. I don't have the look quite right uh, because, again, uh, I, the basis for the look of these was an image that wasn't very distinct, and I've since seen a better image. So I might update it once they launch the bloody thing. <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, so we've got the nine engines down here. There are nine of these Skyforce engines. So that's Skyforce. And these engines provide 70, it's exactly 70 tons of thrust at sea level. So that's a little bit suspicious. Um, they did give very exact ISP figures, which makes me think that they typed it into some modeling program <laughs> so to model the numbers. But you can see it's not great on the ISP, so it'll be early on in the trajectory. And we have the inner stage, the vacuum version, which gets 306 in vacuum. Uh, 306 ISP in vacuum, and it gets a little bit more thrust. The two fairings, uh, the adapter, and then the third stage. So you can see here, uh, we are 52 tons. They said that as a maximum mass of 55 tons. They give a very exact number, which once again makes me think that uh, they base that off of the thrust weight ratio, basically. So 
when they say lift off mass, they just go like, well, we can't really lift off with too much more than that. Is <laughs> I don't think it's actually the mass that it's going to be lifting off with because I can't get it much heavier than this. To give any idea, these tanks are actually twice the mass of the equivalent procedural tanks. And one reason for that is the way they've made these tanks is actually toroidal. In other words, the I think it's the kerosene tank in the center and the HTP tank wraps around it instead of one tank being on top of another, at least from the di diagrams that seem to be the case. So the stage diameter is 2.2 meters. And if we go to uh, 29.1, which is the same volume as this, and that's based on the burn time that they specified in the on the web page. They did give us the burn time. Fill up with HTP. You can see that the dry mass is 995 kilograms. We've got it at 2.39 tons. <laughs> and that's without the engines or the interstage, mind you. That's just this structure here. So it is much heavier. And we'll see whether that works out. Uh, but the reason it's much heavier is because they said it was fairly heavy. So I've tried to make things sort of weigh it down as much as possible. They said that the first stage gets to a height of 61.4 kilometers and only a velocity of 2,510 meters per second. So we will see. We will see. So obviously we th do that. And let's bring it outside and see how it goes. So they give us a lot of numbers to work with, including when things happen, like first stage separation, payload fairing separation, specific heights for a lot of things, which, you know, is sort of dependent on the orbit it's going to and what payload it's carrying. It is meant for sun synchronous orbit. So we'll launch, we'll launch Polar and see how it goes. I'm launching not from England though, sorry, uh, or but Scotland, I guess, Scotland, not England. So we are at Cape Canaveral accidentally, and we'll see how it goes. Maybe I'll make the first stage lighter. Uh-oh, that gap thing happens sometimes, and I don't know why. It'll close that gap, I think, once I release the... See, it, I, I don't know, I don't understand that. It only happens once in a while. So here we go. We'll go north. Even though this is not a good thing to do at Cape Canaveral. So you can see even though it's a little bit gray inside the VAB, it's properly white outside as they have it on the website. Now, of course, the kerosene HTP mix harkens back to the Black Arrow. So does the interestingly colored fairing. Of course, Black Arrow had a red fairing. So this rocket seems to be like a Black Arrow homage. I'm just gonna go straight north. I know I should be correcting for our orbital velocity, but I'm not going to. They said two and a half minutes on this stage. And I thought I had said to two and a half minute burn time, but maybe... Maybe I have too much in this stage, we'll see. Well, it must have... must be launching more vertically. Because they said 61.4 kilometers. Well, I'm gonna shut it down there at 61.4, separation and ignition. Uh... They didn't show any RCS on this stage, so we don't have any right now. You can add it. Uh, I suggest using HTP RCS. And fairing set. So that's all nice and clean. The third stage should have this sort of dark look to it. I think this flight profile diagram is wrong. Because second stage separation happens. And then somehow it gets more velocity by the time third stage ignition starts. <laughs> so where did it get that velocity from if the second stage separates and the third stage ignites later? So, hmm, I think there's something wrong with the flight profile diagram. Again, we're carrying the maximum payload for it. So we're not expecting this to get into a high orbit with this. They said 
polar orbit over a range of 200 kilometers up to 1,000 kilometers. To have uh, this working right, you probably do need to s slap on some extra HTP RCS. Again, I didn't see where they placed those, so I did not place RCS. It does have a little bit of gimbal because they said thrust vector control. Though normally upper stages like this don't. They just rely on the RCS to control themselves. So, in theory, second stage separation, they said velocity 6,352. But they didn't specify whether that was surface, fixed, or orbit. But then again, right now, we're going into a sun-synchronous orbit. So, well, I'm not saying sun, well, polar. So it doesn't really make a difference. We'll end up pretty close to 6,352. A little bit higher than I was wanting, but... Okay, separation and ignition. I'm not waiting on this one. Oh, that's a little bit high. This has multiple ignitions. It can do five. The engine is built into the thing. I'll try and shift that plume down. It doesn't really seem that we had enough delta V here. So maybe I've made the first stage a little bit too heavy. I don't think we got as high as we needed to, and it seemed like we had more burn time than we were supposed to have. One minor thing is that we do have an additional decoupler here. This, because it has an engine module, I didn't want to put a decoupler on it as well. So, we didn't account for the mass of the procedural decoupler, which adds a little bit. It's a very small decoupler. It does add a little bit of extra. Well, we're higher than I wanted to be, and that's probably throwing us off as well. But we're not too far off, obviously. So, yeah, this is not exactly what we need, and I will make some adjustments, but you can see the general setup. Uh, perhaps I'll try one more time with it after I make some adjustments. So again, the reason why I thought we had 2 minutes and 30 seconds worth of fuel in the first stages. It says 2 minutes and 30 seconds here, but clearly we went longer than that. I don't know whether it's because the timer started earlier or something, but I'll try and dump a little bit of the fuel in the first stage and make it lighter in order to get the desired result, if you will. Okay, so now we have fewer seconds on the first stage, and overall we're lighter. And we'll see if that works out a little bit better for us. And, well, I mean, they said maximum 55 tons. But again, I think they were measuring from that's as much as it could lift off with, given the engine specs. And not necessarily that's what it would actually lift off with. But who knows? I might be missing something here. But obviously, again, if I add more structural mass, it's going to reduce our delta V and also hurt our already fairly low thrust to weight ratio at sea level and if I add more fuel it'll increase the burn time which it would not be in accordance with their launch profile so it's difficult it's the same problem as with the launcher at uh, the launcher space website and their rocket one I don't know I think when they specify the max the liftoff mass it's the maximum that it would possibly carry that's all not sure though. Throttle up, SAS is on. Ignition. And launch. I actually don't think RSS, Real Solar System, has the launch site that this would launch out of anyway. It looks like this time we're. I guess we must have wiggled on the launch pad on the previous one. I think I should restore it to its previous fuel because we're going to end up short of 2 minutes and 30 seconds unless we sh switch off an engine. Okay, separation and ignition. And yeah, so the first stage will go back to having 29,100 liters instead of currently I put it down to 27,500 liters. But this time we got pretty high before first stage set. Velocity-wise, if we're using the surface velocity, we're, we're a little bit slower. 
than what they specified. This bit specified 2,510 meters per second at first stage separation. So we are obviously slower than that. But higher, so we could probably adjust that. Okay, fairing set. It seems okay this time, tentatively speaking. And looking at, uh, Wiki says that the payload capacity, 315 kilograms, is to a 500 kilometer orbit. But then it doesn't say, I mean, does that mean a polar orbit? Maybe. So, 500 kilometer orbit. So we weren't too shallow last time after all. This is gonna have extra delta V at first stage SEP. They said 6,352 on the website flight profile. And we're gonna have more than that. I think. We'll see. Maybe as we lose the vertical speed due to gravity, it won't be that much. But we better have more than that because the next stage, this stage, has 1,100 meters per second. Now, there again, we're getting into the awkward wording that they had with loading mass. I don't know when they say loading mass, whether they meant loaded mass, which is the fueled mass of the third stage, or whether they meant that's the additional mass on top of the dry mass. In other words, the loading mass being the propellant mass. If it's a propellant mass, then the third stage has a lot more fuel that it should be able to use. It has a thrust-weight ratio to deal with that fuel, incidentally, so it's possible. But it wasn't entirely clear to me. You can put that fuel in yourself. I allowed the capacity. All you have to do is, in the VAB, uh, fill it to the brim with uh, kerosene and HTP instead of what it's preset to. So you can add the additional fuel to compensate if you think that uh, their terminology loading mass meant the propellant mass and not the loaded mass. Incidentally, the payload adapter has a control core and electric charge. So that is a part that has control. The second stage alone does not have control. The third stage, of course, also has control. Okay, separation and ignition. By the way, the third stage I made very simply. Uh, I can add more details to it. There are a lot more details to it, as you would expect for this sort of thing. I just kept it simple for now. I worry sometimes that what we're getting is artist depictions rather than the final product, you know. Okay, so that's 297 by 280 with 111 meters per second left and still the 315 kilogram payload. So, I'll just go with that. I'll readjust the first stage to have more propellant to get its burn time to where it needs to be. Unless they're, they switch off an engine maybe for G-forces, that's another possibility, but since the rocket needs to have more mass anyway, then we'll do that. And that will be the version I link in the video description. So, Skyrora XL for your kerosene HTP needs, I guess. Uh, with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.